City Council to order and start with a roll call, please. Mayor White? Here. Deputy Mayor Feller? Here. Councilmember Kine? Here. Councilmember Rodriguez? Here. Councilmember Sanchez? Here. If you would join in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Mr. Mullen? Thank you. The City Council met at 3.30 in closed session to discuss the following items. Item 1, Conference of Labor Negotiator on the status of negotiations with the Oceanside Fire Association, Oceanside Fire Management Association, NICO, and the Western Council of Engineers, as well as the unrepresented employees. There is a direction provided, no action to report under the Brown Act. Item 2, Conference of Legal Counsel on Existing uh, Threatened Litigation. So item 2A1 was the tort claim filed by Matt Nguyen. GC 2019153, item 2B, uh, potential initiation of litigation uh, in the matter of one case. There was no action to report on item 2. Item 3, conference with real property negotiator involving the 7.3 acres of parcel, I'm sorry, the 7.38 parcel uh, uh, vacant land located at the terminus of Palo Road and Los Arboritos Boulevard. Um, the negotiating parties are City of Oceanside and Concordia communities. Under negotiations are the price and terms for the use of the property and a potential amendment to a purchase and sale agreement. Item 3B, conference with real property negotiator involving the parcel of land located at Greenbrier Drive, APN 15101044. Negotiating parties, City of Oceanside and National Community Renaissance. Under negotiations are price and terms for the potential acquisition of the property. Again, uh, there is no action to report under the Brown Act on item 3A and 3B. Thank you, sir. And with that, we'll go to our consent calendar, which are items 5 through 17. Mr. Navarro, we have some requests, I believe. Uh, we have uh, item 7 through 13, and item 16 was pulled for discussion by the public. Did you say 7 through 13, Paul? 7 through 13, and item number 16. I believe 7 was removed by staff. Is that correct? That is correct. So we have in the poultry consent calendar items 8 through 13. That is correct. And number 17. And 16. Oh, and 16. Well, move approval of balance. Wait, you said 13? The eight items that 13. are being pulled for discussion by the public are items 8 through 13 and item 16. The balance would be consent calendar items 5, 6, 14, 15, and 17. Move approval for those. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion approved. 5 vote. Mr. Laura. Under item number 11, the city clerk's office received one email communication from Joshua Milks. We received an email communication from Colleen Balch for items 8 through 13 and item number 16. Uh, it was the same email for all items, and this is her comment. Pull items 7 through 13 and 16 from consent calendar for discussion. None of these items should be approved because of coronavirus. The city has no money to spend. 11 and 12 should be put into a master plan for Buccaneer, as requested numerous times by Save. South O. Stop. Respectfully, Colleen Bulch. That concludes the public comments. Councilmember Sanchez. Thank you. Uh, I. You want to take this one at a time? Sure. Okay. Item number eight, uh, which was pulled. This one has to do with the uh, state housing community development program. A uh, million dollars was uh, the total grant. The grant for the city of Oceanside um, was to be, I thought it was about $250,000. It says 237500 And pretty much uh, this was uh, allocated um, for a specific purpose, and that's a community resource center, and uh, for the whole million. 
So on this one, this is basically a pass-through. It's approving the professional services agreement with Community Resource Center, which is in Encinitas. The program was designed to um, have that, uh, the grant was designed um, around that program. So I would move approval for that. Is that for all of them, 8 through 13? No, number 8. Well, I thought we were going to take them one at a time. Okay. Um, I would, okay, if I can just continue, there is one other that I would like to specifically address, and that is um, number 11, um, which is the approval of Amendment 1 in the amount of basically $500,000 um, for the uh, professional services agreement with Dokin Engineering um, for revised contract amount, um, to uh, total contract amount $520,184. Thousand for the preparation of environmental documents and preliminary engineering for the Coastal Rail Trail. And that's from Oceanside Boulevard to Moore Street. So I, we have been getting a lot of communications from South O area um, residents with respect to the Lost Land Treatment Plant and future plans for um, it to um, become a smaller project, basically, basically a pumping station, and then that there would be some land freed up and it would, it would be a public land. And so the South Hill community has wanted to do a master plan um, for that. And that would basically include this as well, because this project is actually uh, right next to the, um, the uh, Loma Alta Creek and Buccaneer, Buccaneer um, Park. So I understand um, their concerns. I, I also feel very strongly that this ought to be planned all at once. So I would be, um, that would be my uh, reason for voting no. So I will be voting um, to oppose this. And basically what I'd like our city to do is to move forward on a master plan for this. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Feller. Thank you. Uh, the, every, every one of us, that were here knows why there was so much stress put on uh, starting the process for the coastal rail trail across the Lomalka ditch. We need this grant. These are um, subject to delay if we if we end up uh, defaulting on this. Uh, I mean, if, if there is a delay, we're subject to losing these funds, for uh, especially for the um, the uh, rail trail. And at, at this point, the the rest of the rail trail is unused. Sand Egg's not in the habit of giving um, money to Oceanside. I mean, we get our what is designated as a fair share, but uh, they're, they're trying to get everybody on bicycles. And, and uh, so this is an opportunity to help them uh, go along there. So um, if nobody has any other suggestions, I'd move approval of items 8. I don't remember the numbers. All the rest of the items. Councilmember Klein? Yes. Over the past couple of months, um, with Guardian of the Rail Trail, I know there has been quite a bit of public that want to be more involved in the process. What would that do if we push this back until we are able to have better public participation and actual present in the meeting? Councilmember Klein, Mayor and Council Members, um, as was stated by Deputy Mayor Seller, we do have a SANDAG grant that's under a strict timeline. The scope of work that was provided by the consultant brings us very close to that deadline. And if we don't proceed at this time, we feel like there's a likelihood we could lose that funding source for planning only. Um, construction would require separate funding and separate authorization. And is that once we approve this, can we actually um, get more public participation in the planning process to just secure the funding? 
Absolutely. Public participation would be part of the planning process. It has been. We've had a number of community meetings for a variety of projects in this area, and that would continue under this activity. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Rodriguez. I second Deputy Mayor Feller's um, motion to approve the balance. Deputy Mayor Feller. Yes, Mayor, I just want to, uh, you know, I too have the very sincere thoughts of trying to ha have them involved in the planning, but I know what the, 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 you're trying to approve here and uh, as well with the uh, Lomalta. Uh, we're doing some, I can't remember the term for it right this second, but it's it's right there uh, on the uh, east side of the track. So uh, so I think whatever we're going to do, we need to continue doing, but they can be in this plan all the way. Councilor Sanchez? I have a follow-up question then from staff. staff. Do we have staff here on this item? Yes, we do. Okay. Hi. Hi. So you hear that there are concerns that this is not going through a very detailed um, public process in the sense of wanting to have a master plan for the entire piece of land. That okay. is correct. Council. Right. And the staff report basically says that um, what would be the next step is the actual plans based on past comments and past um, public input. So what what would you plan, what would you um, ensure would happen to get further public participation and how can we move forward on a master plan? The council Member Sanchez, Honorable Mayor, the Council Members, uh, Ryan Thomas, city engineer. Part of the, the process that we've got listed with Doc, and especially for this particular project, is one public meeting with Doc and the community and city staff. That doesn't mean that city staff isn't going to continue having outreach meetings. Part of these outreach meetings will include meeting with other departments, with the water department, with the uh, with, uh, um, the stormwater group as well, so that we're continuing to bring forward all these projects at the same time. One of the problems that we're facing with all these different projects is that each on the one piece of land, right? On the, on, in the one channel area, yes, correct. Is that each project has its own funding mechanism with its own funding deadlines, with its own uh, schedules that are attached to it, and we're, we're trying to massage all of that into one giant thing. But, but certain things that we have to move forward. There's a lot of moving parts, and, and we're very cognizant of that. We're also very cognizant that uh, the community really needs to be a part of this, and we have no intention of cutting them out. So um, at what point do you plan on having, because I, I don't see any um, public participation on the, on the uh, documentation that we have here. At what point will you, will you be um, anticipating having more public meetings? You said one, right? But you, you do mean to have additional public hearings. That is correct. Um, with the consultant, they have one programmed with the community. And we plan to have that just as soon as we can. We've already received the information from the public back in 2017 as to which alternatives they, they selected. And we did receive maximum votes on that for, for the direction they'd like to go. Um, the follow-up meeting with that would be to confirm, and then the rest of the meetings would be held with staff and the public. Uh, I don't feel it's necessary to involve the consultant in okay. every single meeting with, with the public, as that just gets exorbitantly expensive. Would this be like a Zoom meeting? How would you ensure that the public really does participate? That's, that's the log logistics we're working out right now. In, in currently, um, the first meeting would have to happen probably in June or July uh, with with the public. Um, and we're still working on the logistics of that, but the idea is to get as many people involved as possible. And then as the COVID-19 regulations are relaxed and we're able to 
gather in larger groups, then we would have more in face personal meetings. If if, if uh, it turns out that you have you can gather like ten people or twenty people, and you have more than that, are you willing to have more than one meeting to accommodate the larger crowd? Yes, we will have as many meetings as the community would like to have, so that we get their input. We're not trying to hide anything. We're trying to be as transparent as possible at this point. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Councilman Rodriguez. I heard Council Member Sanchez uh, use the term master plan. Has there ever been guidance by this council in the past to move forward on a master plan for that area? So Council Member Rodriguez Mayor and Council Member, as you will recall, at the budget workshop last week, Principal Engineer Lindsay Leahy went over a detailed description of the Los Angeles plan and what the next steps would be. At that time, staff did commit to providing additional information before we come back in August. And that could include uh, a plan for a master plan for the excess property at Los Salina. There are a number of projects in the vicinity, although none of these other projects, with the exception of the Coastal Rail Trail, are directly on the Los Salina project um, property. But we are putting all that information together, and we will be providing additional information to council as well as laying out a strategy to be followed. Perfect. Thank you, That's Mayor Feller. Thank you. Uh, I hate to belabor this, but the Coastal Rail Trail was a, a, a thought and a project long before any of uh, closing down uh, La Salina. And uh, as well, um, most of this master plan uh, involves La Salina and Buccaneer Park. The tr Coastal Rail tr Trail has always been there. And we can't just close down every operation because we've got three projects that are in, we're, we're talking about a, a, another one on item 12 here. And we just have to, it, it, it's like you hear, you've got to stop everything because of COVID. Well, we're not, we can't close down business. So, um, you know, I'm, my motion stands. And I, I just, I'm, I'm going to support the motion, but I would like to register a no vote on item 10, please. Uh, and my reasoning for that is last week we heard that we are keeping a number of positions vacant in order to save money, um, but here we're spending what is significantly more than what a city employee would be making. Um, and so I feel it's just a fiscally in, inappropriate at this point to spend 311000 for a consultant when we, at this point, could be hiring a city employee. So I'd like to register a no vote. And with that, uh, please vote. Motion approved, 5-0, with Weiss voting no on number 10 and Sanchez voting no on number 11. With that, we'll go to 18. I actually changed my mind, yeah, based on the comments of staff. Okay, then Sanchez votes yes on number 11. Thank, Thank you. you for that correction. We'll receive an oral report on the COVID-19 state of emergency. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, Deanna Larson, City Manager, I'm here with our regular update on COVID-19. Um, by way of background, as you all are aware, um, the county declared a public health emergency in February, followed by the state in March. The city also declared a local emergency in March. Our city operations center continues to operate at level two. That includes um, daily calls with either directors or our emergency operations center staff um, on alternating days so we can coordinate the city response. And those meetings are occurring virtually. In terms of local cases, this was as of yesterday, uh, 95 positive cases in Oceanside. I understand there were two more today. Um, that comes out to 52 cases per 100,000 residents, which is a 0.05% of the city's population, compared to a countywide average of 125, 125 cases per 100,000, or 0.12% of the county population. So the countywide average is about two and a half times the number in Oceanside. 
Um, and then earlier this week, Tri-City Medical Center shared their weekly update. They've had 31 total positive cases out of 841 tests, and they do have seven current inpatients. And then the chart at the bottom does show um, how the cities rate on a per capita basis. And as you can see, Oceanside is amongst the lowest in the county. In terms of uh, distribution within the city, this is a zip code map. It's a little hard to read on the screen. Um, we do have a larger number of cases in the 92057 zip code. Um, and then fewer numbers in some of our other um, zip codes as of this morning, yesterday's numbers. In terms of communications, we've done five, 417, 472 posts across five social media platforms, 37 news releases, four city-specific videos, um, including a video regarding face coverings and current um, requirements that is um, going out today, I think. And we've had over 120,000 visits to the city's COVID web pages. We have a few snapshots there of just some of the posts that we've made to share information with the community. In terms of department updates, um, we had 23 total um, potential illnesses amongst city staff. I was just informed right before this meeting that's up to 25. We have three more that have been referred for testing. Um, and so far, we only have two positive cases among city employees. Um, there are five staff currently off duty, and excuse me, four staff currently off duty, and 21 cleared to return to work. That's the current information I received right before this meeting. In the last two weeks, OPD re responded to a little over 5,300 calls for service, and of those, approximately 4% were COVID-related. The fire department has responded to 93 suspected and nine confirmed COVID calls, and all public safety personnel are following protocols. We have sufficient uh, PPE on hand to handle um, our needs. Library department has been very active providing services virtually. They've delivered thousands of books to hundreds of homes. We've received many positive comments from those recipients. They're doing virtual story times, Zoom book clubs, they did a book club for a Virtual Earth Month in April. They've also sent library cards to all students in the Oceanside Unified School District so those students can access library resources while they are not in school and not able to come in person. They did receive some crisis ebook funding from the California State Library to supplement their e-resources and developed a digital library card for access to the e-resources. Covering beaches, as you are aware, um, we were able to reopen our beaches on April 27th for active recreation only, and the harbor opened on May 1st for recreational boating by household units pursuant to the latest county health order. In addition, the boat launch is open for household units, but we are only offering limited boat trailer parking since countywide there is a prohibition on beach parking lots. They must remain closed. All of our parking lots west of the railroad tracks um, plus lot one in the harbor are closed for that reason. Both the police department and the lifeguards are actively monitoring the beaches. They report a high level of compliance with the active recreation and no gathering requirements, and they are finding that people are cooperative and moving along when engaged, but this has required ongoing education and enforcement. In terms of business activity, our um, development services department conducted 422 plan reviews in April, which was about 76% of the average. We issued 161 building permits, about 73% of our average did over a thousand building inspections, about two-thirds of our average, and um, staff are meeting all of their targeted turning, turnaround times while providing those services virtually. The business loan program update as of um, earlier today, we've had 21 applications requesting 310,000 in funding, which is at just under 15,000 average per applicant. There are 18 pending applications with incomplete information. We are working with those applicants to um, complete their packages so that we can submit them to the Small Business Development Center. Two loans have been submitted and recommended for approving by, approval by the Small Business Development Center. Those loan documents are in process. And then one applicant was denied as it w did not meet our eligibility requirements. In terms of food programs, under the OKC contract that Council approved in late March, um, over 25,000 meals have been provided to Ocean Fighters. 
since it started. The city program, um, over 8,500 restaurant to go meals have been provided since inception. And on a weekly basis, including the Oceanside Unified School District, over 71,000 meals are being provided to the community, as well as 304 boxes, food boxes, were distributed to the public last week. Last week, the state announced their new uh, Great Plates Delivered program. The county will be the local administrator of that program. It's designed for senior citizens, 60 plus. Um, we have notified the, the county of our city interest in participating, and we have offered assistance in uh, public relations as well as restaurant registration for access to that program. In terms of homelessness, we continue to work on our outreach and our efforts. And during the month of April, 26 unsheltered homeless were sheltered. The HOT team is making referrals to county motel rooms as rooms become available due to the transient nature of the program. Both HOT and the social worker teams continue to make touch points and appropriate referrals for services, and there were 114 of those provided during the month of April. Housing social workers had 32 touch points with homeless cases last month. And then we continue to house um, folks through our housing programs, including seven rapid rehousing recipients, six bridge housing recipients, and five permanent housing recipients that were new, either vouchers or through the reunification program last month. And the housing staff is working on implementation of a motel voucher program using some of the homeless funding that was provided under Measure X. In terms of business reopening, as you're all aware, um, the governor on Monday announced there will be a gradual reopening starting on May 8th. Both the state and the county are expected to make announcements tomorrow, providing additional details. A draft safe reopening plan was shared by the county. We've been sharing that with businesses so that they can prepare for the next steps in reopening. And as soon as we receive additional information from the state and county, we will be sharing that with our community. In terms of reopening city facilities, we have implemented our phased reopening plan for parks, beaches, and recreational amenities. This is based on um, what we would anticipate to be staged increases in the gathering limitations for gatherings of 10, gatherings of no more than 50, and then gatherings of 50 plus. And we've identified what facilities will be able to open at each of those phases. In addition, all the departments are developing detailed phase plans for full reopening of all facilities, and we are looking at recommendations such as plexiglass screens, social distancing protocols, and just what will be necessary in order to protect our workforce and provide services to the community. We also continue to work on and implement um, a recovery plan, which will address the economic, social, and fiscal recovery of the community. In terms of fiscal impact, um, as of yesterday, we have a little under $1.3 million in total costs. Um, that does not include funding for the business loan program. would note that not all of these costs are re reimbursable, um, but we have uh, submitted expedited funding requests to FEMA, although we've, not, we've had feedback from them and questions, but we've not received any funding approvals yet. In terms of federal funding, we've been notified of four uh, direct grants that the city will be receiving under the Community Development Block Grant Program, $788,000 for COVID preparation, prevention, or response, um, addressing lower income residents in the city. We are currently surveying community needs. That includes um, surveys at our resource centers as well as an online survey to find out what the community needs are. And we are working on putting a plan together that will be released for public comment and presented to council for approval on June 3rd. The police department was notified of a Bureau of Justice Administration grant for 153000 and change. They did submit their grant application requesting funding for PPE, communications equipment, cleaning supplies, tactical gear, EOC and pandemic training, and COVID overtime. The deadline to submit that is um, later in May, so we don't anticipate hearing anything until that deadline has passed. We were also just informed by the FAA that we are receiving a $30,000 grant for the airport, and so we are looking at a fencing project to enhance security at the airport. 
And then we also notified that we are receiving 291000 under our Section 8 program, specifically for COVID administrative costs and that we will use for overtime and an inspection contract to address our case backload as we have gotten behind um, due to the restrictions that are in place, as well as workplace modifications that will be required for the Section 8 staff. And with that, um, that's our report. I have a few staff here and we're happy to answer any questions. Councilman Sanchez. Thank you, and um, I'm actually pretty excited. I was uh, really excited to hear uh, the governor announce that starting this Friday, additional businesses will be able to be open and um, we'll be providing on Thursday additional uh, directions. The county's already taken a position and is getting in line, has already come up with a form. Uh, it appears that the county may end up being able, our county, has been doing so so much um, so well compared to other counties, um, except for the South Bay area. I guess South Bay has been um, very very challenged with a number of uh, positive cases and um, capacity for the hospital hospitalizations, as well as I understand the ICUs. Uh, but we're doing really well here. Um, I do want to give condolences to the family of Robert Mendoza. Uh, we don't get the information about deaths in Oceanside. We get uh, confirmed positives, basically, um, for the few people who are able to uh, get a pos uh, get a test, because it's very, very difficult to get a test still. The county's trying to rev, rev up the number of testing. We don't have a testing site here. There's a new, new couple of testing sites in Escondido, um, but here it's very difficult. Um, so I'm, I'm not surprised that our numbers are low at 95, uh, but back to um, the family of Robert Mendoza. He was a veteran, he's 43 years old, um, Oceanside resident, uh, former Marine and business owner. He uh, was uh, fought in um, Iraq and Afghanistan, and um, apparently he started to feel having headaches um, around Easter and went in and a week later he passed. So it's unfortunate that we don't know, we don't get to have the information. I understand the county uh, county's position is that, well, it, it, it doesn't reflect on where it was, where they received it, where, they, where, where, the, where the spread was and how he was able to get it, but he was an Oceanside resident and uh, uh, condolences to uh, to his family, um, but the totals for the for the county: it's 4,319 positives, 882 hospitalizations, uh, 281 ICUs. Um, county altogether, the deaths have been 158. Um, and yes, we did have a spike yesterday of nine cases, the most in one day. Um, so a couple more, I believe, today. It's uh, 95. Um, Confirm positives. Uh, I do uh, want to do a shout out. Are you saying something? Sorry. sorry. Okay, because I'm hearing you over there. Um, I do want to shout out to, I got to spend some time with the Oceanside Kitchen Collaborative. Um, it's really exciting to see a group of folks who are working, who are so committed to this vision of recycling food. And, and coming up with fantastic food for such a low cost. And um, Oceanside Kitchen Collaborative is a, a great, great um, organization. Um, their capacity is actually up to 10,000 meals a day, and that is uh, really, really fantastic for us. They, they, they did not know how many meals they could do per day, and uh, during this pandemic, this uh, state of emergency, they've been able to get out up to 10,000 meals. Um, our contract is 3,500 um, per week for that half a million dollars um, contract for three months, and I'm very proud that we were able to do that. And and Vanessa Graziano, she's been out there, um, one one person army really, uh, uh, going up to and, and addressing our homeless. Um, 
with meals, getting meals out to them, as well as raising money to find motel rooms. I think it, um, the one thing I'm very disappointed about with respect to the county was that initially we were told we were going to have maybe 200 of the, um, I don't know, 1,000 rooms, 800 rooms, 1,000 rooms um, for homeless. Uh, for the most vulnerable of our homeless, which would, I mean, that's all they're trying to do is, is um, address the most vulnerable. In San Diego, most of the space is at the convention center. But unfortunately, the one hotel and the 200 rooms that we thought we were going to have ended up being for the whole county, the whole North County. Um, and the uh, Hotel Motel 8 um, ended up not being used at all. So I think that we really... Um, need to push harder on that and I'm, I'm hoping that uh, uh, with some additional funds that are coming through we'll be able to address some of the, house, the housing needs, the shelter needs for um, our homeless. Um, the other thing that the county has done is, and this happened yesterday, is they've approved funding as $5 million with hopefully a $5 million match for the city of San Diego um, for uh, after, uh, excuse me, um, uh, child care for essential, essential services, essential workers. And that's great because that's the one thing that I know I've been hearing a lot about is, is uh, problems being able to, uh, because of the schools being closed, being able to meet those needs. So it's um, really, really fantastic that uh, that's coming forward. And um, this is, today is, uh, Nurses starting the um, starting the week for Nurses Week, so I do want to do a shout out to all the nurses all over the county and all over this um, great country of ours um, who have been on the front line, especially and um, had so many. Um, I mean, basically, it's been a war. We haven't felt it as much here. I I know uh, I personally know a doctor in New York City who um, saw 42 people die within um, her units. And it's, it's a really uh, such a hard thing that's going on in our country. Uh, when we are at war, this is, this is domestic, but when, we ha when, we, when our soldiers are on foreign land, what, whatever the numbers are, they touch each one of us here in Oceanside. It doesn't matter that whether they're here from Oceanside or from another um, city or state or, or, you know, or even on the West Coast, it touches us deeply. So for every one of the um, thousands that have passed um, because of this pandemic um, that I thought we'd never in modern times um, experience, um, the, what is it, 1918 flu happening now here in Oceanside, a pandemic where at least we know one person has, has, has died, young man at 43, um, with kids. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm really glad that we've been able to get through uh, the things that we've been able to get through, um, the uh, warmer weather and, and uh, trying to maintain social distancing, and I, and I really hope that we continue to do that, the six-foot six um, social distancing. Um, to try to c continue to uh, protect the health and safety of our residents in, Sandy, in Oceanside and San Diego County. So um, thank you, staff, for what you're doing. I know it's uh, all day, usually sometimes at night, um, every day, keeping up with the changing orders and the changing requirements. Um, again, the county, very excited the county will be able to self-certify and uh, the county has already put out the forms for our businesses. Hopefully we'll be able to make sure that our businesses are online to, to fill out those, get those forms, fill them out. Um, they don't have to provide a, a copy to the county. They, they do need to post them. And uh, basically it's the uh, social distancing requirements and the sanitation and the face coverings and everything that we um, can do to uh, um, get out of this um, pandemic as quickly as possible. And I'm hoping that it is as quickly as possible. Not Oliver 
um, businesses can reopen um, and, and hopefully not suffer a second a wave or a third wave or whatever they're talking about right now. But um, we have a, a great community here in Oceanside. Thank you for going to the restaurants and for um, keeping our businesses that are, that did choose to stay open, um, going. Thank you very much. Captain Mayor Feller. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'll try not to repeat everything you told us again. Um, I would just thank our staff for all the work they do, uh, whether it's the guys out in the street with the hot teams, whatever it is that, that is going on that is making this uh, palatable uh, for our public. Um, it, I think it's important to recognize them for uh, great effort. So thank you. Councilman Rodriguez. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, I would. I would also just again like to thank staff as we continue to e evolve our response to this pandemic and uh, you know doing what's best uh, with the limited information we have. And so, thank you very much. Um, I would further just like to say that you know I believe everyone's life, everyone's job, and everyone's business is vital and essential to the future of our city. And as a as a body, we have made efforts in attempting to put pressure on the county, which therefore puts pressure on the state, to really bring forth better and, and common sense policies that can get our city, Oceanside, back to work. And so my question has to do with some of the governor's uh, change-ups that he's going to allow. A lot of it seems to be drive-through dynamic. Um, and, and so what's preventing us from allowing drive-through, you know, items right now uh, in relation to the the health order? From my understanding, like, uh, you know, if the Cigar Grotto, for example, in Oceanside wants to offer drive-through services, what in the order prevents them from doing so? All right, take a step at that. Mayor and Council, um, the provision of the governor's order um, as implemented through the county health order, it defines what's an essential business. And so if you're a non-essential business, you can continue to operate as long as there's no contact with the public. And so um, remote orders, you know, if, if you can operate um, and take orders online and have those delivered, that's fine. The uh, problem comes in if you're going to have curbside pickup. And there are some businesses that are operating now with curbside pickup right now. Um, we expect that will be substantially expanded once we get the order from the state tomorrow and perhaps implemented as early as Friday or early next week. But the provisions that um, would prevent that is the section of the order that says you can't have any contact with the public if you're a non-essential business. Got it. So. If you're a cashier at a grocery store, it's okay to accept a credit card or a transaction. But or if you're a Grubhub driver, it's okay to hand off food, but you're not allowed to hand out a bag of clothes or. Come on, son. You forgot to mute it. <laughs> 